Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. I want to talk about some insane icon flips that I've had in the past couple days, including one flip that I had 800,000 coins of profit on, on one card, 800,000 coins of profit on one flip. So I want to talk through that. I also want to talk about the Ramos SBC that we got today and um, why this is kind of a good sign, I think, for the rest of this um, Shapeshifters promo. We're in week two of Shapeshifters, so I wanna talk about this a little bit and what this did to the market because we actually got a decent SBC. Thank you, EA Sports. So I wanna talk about this as well. But first, the icon flips, because right now, uh, you can see I don't have a lot of coins. That's because I have two icon flips that are currently selling. They're actually the same player. I've got two Baggios um, that I got for, for pretty solid prices down below 1.5 million coins flat. And I'm looking to flip these guys up around 1.6 mil. And I want to take you guys through some of these icon flips that I've had. And specifically this Raul. I'm going to pull up the tweet that I posted last night with my actual flip on this. And I want to cover this because a lot of you guys have been asking about trading with icon moments. Uh, and I feel like this is, we need, we do need to talk about this because trading with icon moments is different than trading with other icons because these cards have so much different stat boosts and they have big time stat boosts. It's like a, it's like a, a big time inform uh, for a normal card, but not, but they're icons, right? So I want to talk about these cards because they fluctuate a ton and people absolutely love that using them and you love trying them out. And I want to talk about some of their price trends as well. But follow me over here to Twitter where I have my tweet here. I bought this Raul last night that was on my transfer list. I was able to find this on the 59th minute. Um, I was using an icon sniping filter to get to the 59th minute, which I'll talk about with you guys today. And I saw this sitting there at 1.5 mil and I wasn't super sure on Raul's price, but I knew that he was over 2 million coins. So I bought the card kind of out of instinct. And that's something you just kind of get when you start doing these icon flips is you kind of get the instinct of knowing where some cards are at, even if you don't exactly have their price memorized. So I saw him at 1.5, saw the snipe, and I went to check Footbin to see what his price was. He's 2.5 mil, so he's basically a million more than what it was going for on the markets where I was able to get that snipe. And then as you can see here, I was able to sell it. Uh, it sold overnight at 2.45 mil, and that actually came out to like 820, 100, 826,000 coins, I think was the exact number after tax. So that is, that is my second biggest icon flip of all time, and I was honestly... I didn't realize how big of a profit it was going to be at first. I thought he was at like maybe two mil. So I was like, I, I'm thinking I'm looking at like 200K for a snipe here, maybe 300K. Uh, but then all of a sudden I saw that he was still around two five on the market. So that was awesome. Um, and so I wanna talk about this flip a, a little bit more and some of these other ones and just recognizing when I bought these cards, why I bought them and how I, I profited off of them. Now these cards, this has been over the past two days of trading on foot. And it has made me a ton of coins in this past week. Uh, if you look at the transfer profit leaderboards, I, I last year when I traded in Foot Ultimate Team, um, I traded. Oh no, man! They they reset. They literally just reset because we are on the. We just turned in the month of March. Shoot, man! But it, you're gonna have to take my word on this. And if you were in my streams from uh, earlier today, you can go and check it out. But um, I had around 10 million coins of transfer profit in this month alone. 10 million, 10 million coins of transfer profit. It's been a really slow year for me so far, but I picked it up a bunch this this uh, month. I was really motivated with these prime icon moments because I love trading with icons and I just haven't built up the coins this year to do a lot of that, but now I have. And I'm really motivated to trade these and these are insane ways to make coins. So um, I wanna take you guys through some of the filters that I do uh, on a weekly basis for these icons. Now, a lot of times, we get a lot of pack supply on these icons during rewards times periods, during like squad battle rewards, weekend league rewards, of course, during lightning rounds. And then also during um, during like a, um, a pack supply SBC. Those are the main three times rewards, lightning rounds, and pack supply SBCs where I use this filter right here, which is using the basic chemistry style filter. Now, some of you guys might know this, some of you guys might not know about this very much, but this is a filter that's only gonna filter out the basic chem style players uh, that are being listed on the market. So we're setting a max price of 15 million and then adjusting this as our refresh every single time we back out. To, to refresh the market, you need to change one of your prices every single time you go in to make sure that you are refreshing the listings that the market is loading. 
setting a minimum buy price of 900,000 coins and a max buy price of 2.5 mil. And this is gonna pull up all the cards in that 900K to 2.5 million coin range. And it gets to the 59th minute really quick, as you can see. It literally took me three pages to get to the 59th minute. A Lampard for 1137, that's not a bad price. And you can see that I'm getting all the listings to show up right now at the 59th minute. Sometimes when you do these filters, you can tell that you're not actually getting all the listings because you'll get to where it shows the, the 59th minute, but it's actually the last cards at like the 57th minute. And then the next one is at like four hours, right? Or the next one before that 57th is like 50 minutes. Then you know you're not getting all of the listings. Uh, I'm actually gonna drop my minimum buy now about 50K down because I think that I wanna see a few more cards on this listing. I wanted to pull a few more up. So again, we dropped that to 850. It's about the same, the third page, but we have a few more cards pulled up. And I like the way this filter looks a lot better. So back here, what we're going to be doing is you want to get to that 59th minute as fast as possible, because that means you're going to be getting your eyes on the brand new listings on the market. And you want to be the first person to get there so that you can see them and possibly trade with them. So boom, we get to the 59th minute. There's a, there's a Shevchenko here that's been up for about a minute so far. You can compare price and you know, that's not really that good of a deal. This is where the knowledge really starts to, to come in, right? And that instinct that I talked about with the Raul card as well is big to have. So um, I got to the 59th minute with Raul and I knew I was like, man, that's not a 1.5 mil card. So I just kind of instinctively bought it. But this is where it helps you to know player prices because you see a new card pop up. If we can if we can get one to pop up with a basic chem style, that'd be nice to use as an example here. Um, dude, right there, boom, a, uh, a Carlos Puyol, right? We have Puyo here for 943,000 943, coins. If you compare price, you can realize that, that is not a good price for his card because there's multiple of them. 945 is one here, 945 right there. So this wouldn't be a good card to go and flip, but let's say it did come up at a deal. Let's say that this was listed at 843,000 coins and you're, you're not sure if that's a deal or not right away when you get, get back here and look at it, especially on this basic chem style filter. Any card that is undercut, that is pretty pop profitable is going to get bought within a minute or less because uh, a lot of people use this filter. It's a very popular filter um, and you're going to have some competition on here. That's why knowing prices and getting to the 59th as fast as you can is very, very important. So knowing prices is the first thing that's very important, but also you need to know the tax amount, right? Because there's a 5% on, on EA tax on every transaction in this game. Uh, so we have another icon pop up here, 87 Campbell, which I know for experience is definitely nowhere close to 800,000 coins. So there's a lot of people that will try to trick you with these cards with their listings back here. Um, but there's also tax that you have to factor in as well. A lot of times I look for a hundred thousand coin undercuts in this sort of price range. When we're looking at like cards from 950 K to like 1.2 to 1.3 mil, I'm looking for undercuts on icons that are at like a hundred thousand coins, right? This Lampard sells for just over 1.1 mil a lot of the time, 1.13, 1.13. If I saw this listed at anywhere uh, below 1.05 mil, because I know if I sell this card at like 1.13, I'm gonna have somewhere around the range of like, what is that, 57 to 58K profit, I think, or of not profit, but of um, tax. It's like 58,000 coins of tax on this card at like 1.3, uh, 1.13 mil. So that means I have to subtract that price off of my buy price, um, or I have to subtract that price off of my sell price to get the total number of coins that I'm gonna be, get going into my club from there. And then I need to make sure that my buy price is low enough so that I'm making money with this. Because it's very, very easy to buy. Let's say I bought this Frank Lampard right here at 1.1 mil. Let's say I bought this at 1.1. And I said, oh, I'm going to sell it for 1.137. I'm going to make 37,000 coins. No, you're not because there's the EA tax that you have to worry about. So um, you have to be very careful with that tax. Know what that tax is. A very easy way to figure out that tax is take your sale price of the card, multiply it by 0.95, and then subtract your buy price. That's a very easy way to find your actual profit. Your, your actual profit is how you'd find that out. But, but if you do 0 .9, 0 0.95 times the sell price, that would tell you how many coins you're going to be getting into your club from uh, that sale. And then from there, you can figure out, okay, well, if I'm going to be selling this uh, Lampard at 1.137, I'm going to be getting um, 
1.08 or 1.09 million coins back from this sale, like 1.08 mil after tax, then I would need to buy it for like 1.05 or less to make it a reasonable flip to make any coins, right? You don't want to be buying these prime icon moments and then selling them for a 5k profit. Buying buying a card for a million coins and selling it for a 5k profit is not ideal, right? I bought these Baggios. This Baggio has been fluctuating a lot today. It goes back and forth between like 1.5, 1.58, 1.59 to like over 1.6. Right now it's kind of on a low end of the fluctuation. So I'm not in a hurry to sell. We have one listed here overnight at 1.6 mil. I'm trying to get this card out just under 1.6 mil. As again, we do have a couple listings here, an open bid listing. That's basically a cheeky start price on an open bid listing. Uh, so this is the kind of stuff that you just have to really notice. And you learn those prices by watching the cards sell. Like that's why I added that card to my transfer list because I want to see what it actually sells at down the road um, and what that bid actually ends up going for as we have another bid right here. So I'm watching this card pretty specifically right now because a lot of times I don't recommend having two of the same card to try to flip with, but that's kind of where we're at at the moment. So hopefully that explains some things about icon moments trading. They're really rare, so they fluctuate a ton. Use your flipping graphs, right? I'll show you the, the graph for Baggio. I know some of you guys have been asking about these, this trading method with icon moments. So this is why I bought Baggio today because the lowest that I'd seen him all day is 155 is where he has sold all day. I know it's weekend league sell off, but the weekend league is still going on and the weekend league actually got extended. So I think there's some, there's some, there's going to be a little bit of extra demand maybe on Sunday tomorrow, instead of just all selling off. You can see on Friday, his lowest was 1.59 on Friday as well. And just this card in general on the daily graph has not really been below 1.6. So he's on actually one of his lowest days right now, uh, towards the 1.6 million range. But um, I'm still fine with getting that card out at around 1.6 mil because I do know that he sells there, um, which is not bad. It's a GG, but uh, that's kind of explaining some of the icon moments trading. Use Footbin, watch cards, add them to your watch list, and then know the price fluctuations and know the prices of the cards. These cards are moving all the time in price, right? This Van Nistelrooy was like 1.15 mil all week this week, uh, but he rose up to like 1.2, 1.3 this weekend on Friday night, especially. So uh, just watch these cards, know their prices. They do go up for weekend league now. Um, it looks like they've kind of hit a price where a lot of them are staying pretty stable. Most of them, not all of them. Uh, so just stay up to date on Flippin and watch these cards throughout the day when you're searching icons and wondering what prices are. Just throw them on your transfer targets and you can see what they sell at. And that's knowledge that you can use to further your icon trading abilities. So again, I wanted to talk about that today because a lot of people have had questions on it. It's risky. It's fun. If you don't have over a million coins, then you shouldn't even be thinking about trading like that, um, which is why I want to move on and talk on some other things too, because I know a lot of you guys don't have over a million coins, but if that's a goal for you to get there, we can do some things to help you get there as well. Um, I want to talk about this SBC player moments. Where's it at? Sergio Ramos player moments, Sergio Ramos. Now, this is like the best SBC that we have gotten value wise, in my opinion, in like two weeks. And I don't know what gives like why are we, we're not getting good SBCs and good content right now. But position change, Sergio Ramos, high medium work rates, not the most ideal if you're going to play him at center back, um, which I think a lot of people are buying this card to then position change it in game to play center back. That's what a lot of people I think are interested in doing. And uh, it makes sense, right? Because this card at center back looks pretty insane. 87 agility, great for a center back. The strength, the defending, literally all around, he, he is Hullet Gang uh, with 90 defense, which is really freaking dope. 91 acceleration as well, so he's going to feel pretty fast. Um, and then, of course, I mentioned the good agility, great composure. The tackling is phenomenal. So I'm waiting to see what the reviews are on this card, but this is the best value SBC card that we have gotten in a while in my opinion. Uh, and I don't have a problem at all. If you guys go and do this SBC, what does it require? 86 rated with an inform 87 rated and another 87 rated squad. This SBC comes out to around 500,000 coins. So as you can expect, high rated SBC fodder rose today because people were coming out and they were doing this SBC. As you can see, 86s are up like two to three K to from 12 K to 14 K. 88s are up like 5 to 6k a card. Some of these 87s, 88s, and 89s are up like 5 to 6k a card from where they were. Is this a time to sell? Absolutely not. Please do not sell your high rateds at this time. I know that you saw them go up. 
I know that it might seem like you should take the coins and that you're tired of being unassigned and all that stuff, but please hold on to these cards. A lot of stuff what EA likes to do is when they put out good SPCs, a lot of times what you see is that they will kind of chip away at the high rated gold prices, right? Like it's not always they go from super duper low, the SPC fodder price is what we're talking about. They don't always go from super duper low all the way and just shoot up crazy, right? That's not how it works. They kind of chip away at it. David De Gea was 33,000 coins this morning. Now he's up to 38, 39,000 coins. And I don't see this dropping. I see this continuing to rise because more and more people are doing the David De Gea, or this, doing the moments uh, Ramos SBC. Look at this right away. 480,000 coins to complete. It's continually rise up to 509,000 coins. So just be careful with this because I know it's a really good card, but this is a card. I'm not going to be doing this SBC because it doesn't fit my team. But this is a card you could easily craft during team of the season when you're doing upgrade packs, right? Um, and it requires a lot of higher rated because so team of the seasons are going to help with that when we get to that point. But my main message for the, for this SBC, it affected the fodder market because it pushed the fodder market back up, right? 87 rated are now back to 21, 22,000 coins, which is where they used to be as like a low end. Look at this, man. Since the Baby Icon SBC came out, Kaylor Navas has not gone below 20,000 coins until this last week when he was 16K. 16K this past week in February. And since November, this man has been above 20,000 coins. And now he's back to kind of like his normal range that is was low. Between November and now, 21,000 coins would have been a low point, right? He hit 27K, 23K, 25K. During the mid icon SBC, hit almost 30,000 coins during the baby icon SBC, I mean. So for these cards that you guys have invested in, a lot of you guys have invested in these. You should have at least your club stocked on these high rated. I've been trying to pound that to you guys because they've just been stupid, stupid cheap. Hold, hold on to those cards because there's got to be more SBCs coming. I really, really hope that this Ramos SBC today is the start of something switching gears and foot and something with promo with promo cards and with SBCs becoming more affordable and more doable and just a lot more hype, right? Because last week we had Mkhitaryan, that was a decent SBC, but Olaza, why? No, not a lot of interest in that. Of course, some of these other SBCs we've had, Aspilicueta wasn't bad, all right? We've had two not bad SBCs in a row. Zakaria, not bad, a little bit overpriced. We keep getting a lot of these SBCs in the 200,000 coin range, which I think is like EA's sweet spot range where they can get a lot of people to do them, but still make it expensive enough that it sucks a lot of coins off the game. Uh, but expensive SBCs, I'm talking this Holland, just very, very expensive for this. I even think Neymar is a bit overpriced in my opinion. I just hope that we continually get, Kimmich wasn't bad, another 200k SBC. So they're kind of chipping away at us right now. We've had a couple a solid string of bigger name players and SBCs with the Kimmich, with the Aspilicueta, and now with the Ramos, that I think there's more coming along with this wave. So that's why I'm telling you guys to hold your SBC fodder. It is up a little bit, but it's not up enough for me to really want to go out and to sell it. That's kind of my opinion. Um, I would just be flipping things on the market right now. Trading is still fantastic. Whether you're trading with chemistry styles and you're flipping cards, you can see I bought David De Gea. Oh, never mind. He's untradeable. Kane's untradeable. What did I buy Emerson for? I bought Ederson for 27,000 coins. What is Ederson right now according to Footbin? Ederson's 30K. Do I want to sell him? No, because if we go look at Ederson's graph, there's probably going to be a point in time where this card does reach back over 37,000 coins in January, right? You know, 30, what is it? 36,000 coins here. There's probably going to be another point in time where this Ederson card rises back to like 34, 35K. That's going to be my sell time on that card. And that's what I would recommend with you guys. Again, hold these cards. Uh, is it a good time to buy them? I wouldn't say it's a really good time to buy the high rated fodder because it just went up a bunch today. If you're going to buy anything that is fodder related, I would stick to like 84s because 84s are still pretty low. Mezid Ozil, how much is he? Is it like 2K, 3K? Some of these cards are pretty low. 2,700 coins for an 84 rated Mezit Ozil. If we get any repeatable SBC that requires an 84 rated squad, these cards are going to, they're going to go up really quick because um, one thing that I noticed from the market this weekend is if prime icon moments can rise and if people are paying big bucks for a guy like Ribery, right? Like this Ribery card has stayed really, really firm around the, uh, like the 2.3 million range. 
if there are people paying this much for these cards, and especially if um, if Icon Moments went up this weekend, uh, that tells me that this market still has coins and this market still is, you know, not broke, basically. After we had a lot of people losing coins in the past weeks with the people investing for mid icon and it not coming, um, I still think that there are people that have coins in this game based on uh, what has happened in the market this week. So um, I would still hold on to those cards because if a big repeatable SBC does come, like the mid icon SBC, if it ever comes, guaranteed shapeshifter repeatable SBC or something of the like, I do think that you would see a lot of people's coins go into that and that would make high rateds fly um again we're not too far away from another round of player of the month sbcs as well so that's you know we have a messy player of the month that could be coming up soon eight days remaining on courtois so after courtois it's messy player of the month time we're gonna probably have a premier league player of the month here in the next week as well with the aguero going away then holland has 12 days remaining and then neymar still has 18 but we're entering a new round of player of the month territory too, which could bring another messy SBC in another week or so. So uh, that's going to be interesting to watch with the high rated fighter prices. So I would continue to hold on to those cards until we get more SBCs, which hopefully we do uh, through the rest of the shapeshifter promo and through the rest of these next upcoming weeks on this game of FIFA ultimate team. So if you enjoyed this video today, Smash a thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you're new. It's been Nate, the Foot Accountant. Catch you guys later. Peace out.